Hey there, Peter Gregg, Miami, Florida. Welcome to the Christmas Room. Sit back, relax. You are about to watch a Peter Gregg video. Something warm, human, and wonderful happens when you watch Peter Gregg. All right, for the first time in this special room, I have the Sony A9 that I have the pleasure of recording on. And so you're watching right now the uh, Sony A9. So what did I do? I white balanced with a better white balance. Okay, I normally put it up here like this. So I'm using this excuse. And what I do is I use the eyedropper, click right on there. Or you put it in front of the lens and you shoot at your main light, whatever the source. If it's the sky, if it's that, whatever it is. And the camera will record. Now I've done both on this one. I'm using the new for, for me because I don't have Sony equipment. So what I had here was the A7R Mark III. And with the A7R Mark III, it was kind of my first uh, uh, step into the, the Sony pool, if there was such a thing. I was dipping my toes in. Now, I have had the experience of the A6500, and I, I just kind of let that one go, but I did do a report on it, and it's up on this channel. Uh, but uh, then I got the A7R Mark III, and... That got me interested. Now, uh, it caused me to order uh, an A7, just three, A7 III, Mark III, whatever you want to call it, the A7 III. So I had to send the A7R Mark III back, and I'm going like, you know, I'm really very curious as to what the A7 III is going to be like. So I got the A9, and that's what we've got, and I've got it for a few weeks. It's going to be really cool if I can get the A9 and the a7 III here at the same time. Wouldn't that be in interesting? But it's got the similar focus system, similar size uh, of the uh, uh, the sensor. They're both 24 megapixels. The a7 uh, Mark III, the newer one, does a little bit better in lower light. I've been watching and reading everything. And what I want to address, oh, well, here's a couple of problems, all right? Uh, the first one is on the a7 uh, or A9, which is what I got now, which is a higher level than the A7R3. The A7R3 allows me to shoot 30p and 24p uh, with, it, and you don't even think about it. You don't crop the sensor, and this one doesn't either. But the A9, the $4,500 one that you're watching right now, crops it in 30p. So I set it to 30p for the first one because this is what I'm used to, what you're used to. Uh, and if you notice, we kind of lost the Santa Claus and I didn't light the light back here. So I'm going to come back here and turn on the light. Ah, I think that light is in the frame. So it's we've lost the Santa Claus. It's on that side of the room. And we go over to the grandfather's clock on this side of the room. And I had to pull the table back, the desk that I work with. It's basically a rolling table. Uh, so uh, I'm farther back where normally I would be standing right here where my hand is now. So like for me, two steps forward. So I pull that back so that I'm still in with the, with the desk and I'm able to stand. I'm still able to walk around. Where's Jingles? Oh, I gave Jingles a bath today. So he's running around like a little wet mop. And I don't know if he's in the room. Jingles, come here, baby. Oh, there you are. Oh, you look like you're getting dry. You still feel, he still feels damp, you know. He still feels a little bit damp. Yeah. And he's all perky because when he gets a bath, he runs around the house like a, like a crazy bazazi. I just made that word up, you know. No extra charge. <laughs> so we have the crop. Um, now... This is the 55 millimeter 1.8 lens, which is the $900 Zeiss tagged uh, labeled lens compared to the 50 millimeter 1.8, which a lot of you guys said, Peter, don't bother with it. Don't even bother with the 50 millimeter 1.8. It won't do well with the video with the face detection. So I believed you. So when I ordered the uh, A9, which this is the box, it's got an orange side on the thing here and I ordered it with the 55 millimeter Zeiss 1.8 sharp lens okay yes it's sharper than the 50 millimeter 1.4 FE lens there the expensive one the 1395 lens however you add the crop from the camera 
and you move up from 50 millimeters to 55 millimeters, you drop it down to 1.8, or you move it up to 1.8, and I don't think it's as comfortable. Uh, this room is 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, and the little extra over there, so it's say 24, 25 feet. The camera's on that wall, that Christmas tree's on that wall. So if you're thinking about um, recording this in a smaller room than a 24 or 25 foot length room and you need to have half a body, <laughs> which is what I want, so I'm sitting at a desk, you need, you, you need some room. So you need you some room, all right? So Jingles, what you doing? Is still in the picture because I decided if I was going to centerize it, and if I do, I get like half of the Santa Claus, the standing one on that side, and half of the grandfather's clock, and it wouldn't be so nice. So this is kind of pushing me towards either shooting 24p uh, or shooting in another lens, which is like from $900 to $1,400. And then the third option is to wait and see what happens when the Sigmas are released, if they will focus as good as the actual uh, Sony lenses. All right, so the, the topic for this is, first of all, welcome to the A9. This is what the quality looks like. We are shooting in 30p ISO 800 uh, f1.8. Uh, the shutter speed is 1 60th of a second. Uh, what else? What else? I'm shooting in the standard color profile. I pull down the saturation, the contrast, and the sharpness down two uh, on each one of them. One of them is only down one. I'll get you the settings for the next video. But it's not that important. So the topic for this one is a couple of the major differences. If you're trying to choose between one system and a Sony is most of the systems, the Panasonic, the Canon, this is a Panasonic, you can do tap and track, which means you can look at the LCD, which this one is flipped out backwards. Okay, you can tap, I can tap on jingles, he can move around, and it'll track. The white box will go around. The uh, Canon 80D does the same thing. I can turn this camera on, I can uh, aim it towards jingles, I can tap on him, I get my white box, which it's not interested in doing right now. <laughs> okay, I do my white box, and, oh, I know what it is. I have it in auto, uh, manual focus. So now, I tap, I get my white box. That white box just tracks all the way around. So I did show that in a prior video. I recorded the back of the camera, uh, and uh, it was okay, to be honest with you. It wasn't the best. Uh, you go, or most people would go, why don't you just do an HDMI out? You cannot do an HDMI out and keep face detection. You cannot do Wi-Fi and get face detection. So you have to turn your Wi-Fi off and you have to not plug anything, anything, anything into the HDMI output or your face detection goes kaboom, it goes by. Now, a couple of people uh, in the two videos from this video, before this video, were very kind and they said, but Peter, we can do tap and track. And I was challenged because it's like I have looked all over. I have watched other people's videos, the big guys that I watch. Some of them even say exactly what I say. You can't tap and track with the Sony. But you can! You can tap and track with the Sony! <laughs> all right? And that's the whole theme for this video. So I got this bar, which I use for different reasons. So I put one camera facing the other. Here, let me show you. This is what it looked like. I had the Sony on the front and the uh, Panasonic GH4 on the back. And I actually was recording the screen because I can't plug in a recorder to show you the screen. Uh, or I can go down to 1080, but I wanted to stay in 4K. So. Here's what you do to do tap and track. You go into the menu, uh, and the menu is, is quite confusing. Uh, even for people that are in it, they'll tell me, I don't remember where it was, or I can't find it. And these are Sony guys. So this is not a picking on the camera um, moment, all right? It's just, this is how it is, all right? It's hard to find stuff. So a couple of people told me, um, and I say thank you to you guys right now. I just want to say thank you, all right? Thank you for giving me the information. So now I'm going to, uh, well, the first thing I'm gonna do is gonna show you the menu, all right? 
you're going to go into the menu. You're going to go into the first one because it's got a camera at the top left and then another camera next to it. And then there's multiple menus underneath that. So in menu one, box uh, or uh, menu five of box one, the top menu, we'll call that a box. OK, and then all the ones that are listed underneath, we'll call that the menu. So in box one or camera one, you go over to menu five and the very top one where it says auto focus center lock on, turn that to lock. Now, does that give you any kind of an implication that this is going to give you tap and track? No, it doesn't. As a matter of fact, I said to myself when I saw that, I don't want that. I don't want it to lock on the center. <laughs> okay, but turn it on and watch what happens. Here's the video. OK, here is me tapping and tracking on Jingles. You can see the white box going around him. I'm going to do a couple of different things in the room. And now you're watching me do tap and track. And while you're watching me do tap and track, since I'm on a lapel uh, mic, I'm going to come back here and I'm going to sit in the chair and relax. And you're watching the movie. OK, so it gives me some time off. So this is what it looks like when you're tapping and tracking. So yes, 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 the Sony A6500, the A7R3, the A9, and I'm presuming also the new A7 III or A7 Mark III, whichever way you like to talk, will tap and track just like a Canon will. So they're equal. Now you can come to the conclusion where you could fairly ask, which is the better focus system? They're both really darn good. That is uh, the diplomatic way of me getting out of that question. So Peter, which one really is better? Honestly, I'd have to say that the Sony actually performs better than the Canon, but they're both so good that that doesn't knock Canon out. I could just as if this Canon 80D or some Canon had a uh, 4K in it, I could be very comfortable because any camera trips up, any camera screws up. It's just the nature of the cameras. So it's the driver that makes them sing, that makes them shine. So I can make the Canon work beautifully. And after I've spent a good portion of this day, like a kid with a, a in a candy store, I was tapping and tracking everything I could find. I tapped and tracked jingles. I tapped and tracked the jar of mayonnaise. I tapped and tracked uh, something on a picture frame, everything. It works. The tap and track works. And it's as good as the Canon. Some people would say it's better. Others would say the Canon is better. So you see how I covered my rear end on that one. So it doesn't matter which team you're on. It almost feels like we're playing football. It's like one group against the other. Hey guys, we all have to spend money to buy these cameras. So we might as well work together because it's like, oh, this is better and that's garbage. That's child play. I, I don't want to play that game. So anyway, that's the point of this video. It does tap and track. So what are we doing now? This is set to the wide area focus. Autofocus uh, uh, face tracking is on. Got nothing to do with tap and track because I can't reach to the back of that camera to tap on this face. See this nose right here? And it will not let me do it with the phone. Remember, I have to turn the Wi Fi off and the HDMI off. So now I'm at the mercy of the uh, camera doing the focusing. Now I got my back to the camera on purpose. So you're going to look and see what it's doing. Is it focusing on me or is it focusing on those shiny lights in front of me? So now I'm going to turn around and it's going to catch my face and it's got something solid to stick to when it does uh, the face. Right Jingle Bells? Yeah. So I'm walking around on purpose because that's the point of this camera. Full frame face detection and now they came in the middle of the night and they put ta ta and, uh, tap and track in my camera. I was sleeping, you know, kind of like the tooth fairy uh, came in, but it was the Sony fairy. And they put tap and track into my Sony camera and into yours. If you've got the A7R3, if you've got the A9, if you've got uh, the A6500, I'm guessing the A7R2, but I don't know if somebody knows. 
make a comment for other people because other people are going to be looking this up because this is big news because that's the major difference between Canon and Sony is the Sony automatically drops into tap and track. You tap on the screen and it just mosey along and on whatever it is you tap, uh, tapped on and it's going to track that thing. So does the Sony. The Sony does the same thing and it does it really, really well. I was going around the room going tap, 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 tap. Now what you can't do is turn that off on the Canon. But you can on the Sony. So you got a little bit of a leg up on the Sony over the Canon and that is you could make it just to wide area detection. Turn the, the tap and track off. Don't have to stop the camera. You don't have to stop the recording. You don't have to go into any menus. You just push the button in the set button or if you got that set for something else you push the, the uh, joystick in and it'll say tap or face or whatever it is cancelled. I call it tap and track, okay? So that's the news of the day. That's the video for today. Yay, yay, yay. Hear ye, hear ye, hear ye. We have Tapo Traco. Tapo Traco. We got it on the Canon. We got it on the Panasonic. Uh, I'm sure you guys got it on the Fuji. I haven't been able to get a Fuji in here yet. And we got it on the Sony. They hit it so well, <laughs> they did a really good job. All right, that's it. That's it for today. Just a short video, but this is big news. Big, big news. The big news of the day, the big news of the day is Sony cameras do have tap and track. Sony cameras, yes siree, they have tap and track. And you heard it here from the desk of the Christmas room. <laughs> now other people do have videos showing it, okay? They're not tagged very well. I have done research, so I'm going to put it in the tags. You can look up tap and track, Sony tap and track, and hopefully you'll be able to find this video. So that's about it. Peter, Greg, thank you uh, for watching this. Uh, for some of you guys, it's like, oh, we knew that. And some of you guys, it's like, oh, now the Sony looks so much more interesting. We do have tap and track. We didn't think we did. Peter said we didn't. I made a mistake. It does. Other people said they didn't. They made a mistake too. Let's forgive everybody. <laughs> okay. But Sony, you guys really got to bring that to the forefront because that's really a very important feature. And it comes with the default being off. Probably because you'll be confused as to, oh, how do I stop it from tapping and tracking? I want to stop. I want to stop this tap and track. The camera's getting away from me. Oh my God, it sits on the loose. So they turn it off. Okay. All you got to do is turn it off is you can push the set button or you can push the joystick and press it in, straight in, tap a track, off, back to the normal, uh, you know, the, whatever movie you were watching to begin with. All right, let's end this video. All right, Peter Gregg, Miami, Florida. Catch you later. Thank you all my new subscribers. If you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. Hit that button. I don't know why. I, we've got like 23,000 subscribers now. I'm, I'm doing fine. I'm just fine. I think I get $20, $25 a month, able to go to McDonald's and order two double stacks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, Peter Gregg, Miami, Florida. Bye-bye. Catch you later. Whoosh. You have just watched another Peter Gregg video. Something warm, human, and wonderful happens when you watch Peter Gregg. Thank you for watching. Description of all equipment used in this video plus any notes Peter took while filming are always placed in the description box, show more box, or down arrow thingy next to the title on mobile apps. Duly noted.